Good morning or afternoon. Here is, um, we're joined by River Dog, our seven and a half month old puppy, Golden Retriever. Hi, River. There she is. You guys are the first to see her on camera here. Although if you've been following me on Instagram, you've seen me take a lot of pictures of her. She's very photogenic. Who doesn't want to take a picture of their dog? Well, I hope you guys are doing well, and we're getting so close. We're right in the the midst of the holidays, and there's a lot of chewing going on with a seven-month-old puppy. <laughs> okay, River, that's good. <laughs> so, hey, thanks for joining us. We're going to be doing some critiquing, and if you guys wouldn't mind giving us that thumbs up, that does seem to help somehow, and... Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our episodes and you get to see River as she grows up. <laughs> okay, if you don't like dogs and golden retrievers, you've come to the wrong channel, by the way. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. So before we dive into... Okay, River, I'm going to have to put you over here now. Thank you. Good. And before we dive into our... The rest of our stuff here let me just say i'm mark silver author and uh, educator photographer in carmel california and we're happy to have bay photo sponsor us now they don't have any actual specials this week but you can uh, order stuff and you can get these are last minute gift items that you can get and you can always get a gift card for somebody and one thing you will always get with your first order you're always gonna get a 25% discount on your first order let's see that didn't go through there we go there it is and there's a code there for it somewhere and um, well actually I guess as soon as you create your account they give you the 25% discount so that's look always make prints and Bay Photo is the place that can help you out. Bob Holmes, our good friend Bob Holmes, has got an exhibit going. And, of course, the prints were made by Bay Photo. Now, what does that tell you? What does that tell you? If Scott Kelby, Bob Holmes, Bambi Cantrell, Mark Silver all use Bay Photo, you guys might want to use them as well. Well, before we dive into our show here, I want to show you a photograph. This is, guess who? <laughs> uh, this is on my Instagram, which you should go ahead and, and uh, follow. It's easy. It's right here, at Mark Silver. See that? You guys should definitely follow me on Instagram. But I posted this. This is me, uh, age 19, at the San Francisco Art Institute. And I'm photographing with my trusted Leica M3 that I used everywhere and I used a single lens I did not use a 50 millimeter I did have one but I used a 35 millimeter lens and just photographed all over the place and I'm I noted in the uh, description here that that summer um, I went to the mountains and became a mountaineering instructor so I was in the mountains for four months in Colorado and Wyoming and I carried this camera with me everywhere. I had a handheld light meter which I still have and um, you know naturally when I came back from these excursions I processed all of the 35 millimeter film. I still have all that stuff and I have scanned some of it, not all of it, obviously that's a lot of rolls. Anyway, yeah, hey you guys, so People are tuning in. We've got uh, Christy. Thank you, Christy. She is a cute pup. And we've got Terry. Hello, Terry. We've got uh, Gear and uh, uh, JW, JM, and Bakami. And my Sarah, thank you guys for tuning in from all over the world. That's really awesome. Well, Jared, why don't we. Uh, oh, we got to mention that we're going to have a holiday special, all right? We do. In fact, What's the not story? only are we going to have, we have one. It's live. It's, has it been right launched? Now. Yep, it is live right now. Uh, I will put the link 
in the okay. chat, but we are putting our courses for $97 each. This is a great chance uh, to get it for you or someone you love. And also, as always, uh, we have the free book. You just pay shipping and handling. That also makes a really great gift uh, for yes. somebody. Um, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, like, uh, I know a lot of people that have reached out and said that they've gotten it for grandkids and kids because they want to nice. help them get into photography um, and help them love it. And it's a great book for for that or somebody you know who, you know, they did film, but they maybe didn't get into digital. There's still people out there like that that haven't yeah. quite gotten into it. So it's a great gift that you can give to anybody for that. So I'll be putting the link in the description. And you can get my course, Advancing Your Photography, which follows this book exactly. It's Everything in the book is in that course. But it's me talking and it's updated because we did it at the beginning of this year. And also the Bob Holmes course on assignment where I follow Bob around and uh, ask him all sorts of questions. Why are you shooting it this way? What's, what's your exposure? This and that. And it's really cool because it's two days with a National Geographic photographer, come on. And then you've got my composition course. So you can get all three, or you can get any one of them, and I think you guys should definitely do that. And there's your special right there. Okay, well, let's dive into our critiques. So I'm gonna pull up this first one. Tell us what we're looking at here. This is from Christopher right. Carpenter. Yep, this is from Christopher. So this was shot on uh, Dia de... Dia de Diablo, um, right? No, Motue. No? Ma Mortos? De Morta, oh, yeah. De yes, de de. My, my Spanish is not uh, very good, so uh, I, I will try my best. Um, so it shot on that day, a family gathering in the glow of cemetery candlelight to cuddle a toddler. And this was taken in Mexico. Beautiful photograph. And it's, yes, it's kind of like my understanding is it's their... It's their Halloween, right? The photograph is spectacular. There's, there's no, I'm not gonna suggest anything to change on this because the light, obviously the light is fantastic coming out of the candles, creating this really warm, beautiful light. The expression of the grandmother and the baby and the mother looking, you know, away, this is COVID time, you know, that really shows where we are right now. But it's a beautiful photograph. It's very well composed within the frame. Not a thing I would change with it. So well done, Christopher. Good job. All right. Are we giving away? We're giving away a print this show, oh, right? Oh, yeah. As promised. We are, yeah. We are giving away a print. Thank you for So you guys, me. in order to perhaps win one of these... Uh, what you want to do is you want to ba basically make sure you've submitted something and we go over it. So it'll be somebody who we've actually shown here. All and right. Christopher, it was shot in Mexico. Are you based in Mexico or are you based in the United States? I'm just curious. Yeah, good to know. Um, anyways, our next one that we've got here, this is from Joseph, uh, and it's a simple, minimalistic, black and white capture of a lighthouse on the north shore of Lake Erie on a foggy morning. Another awesome photograph. And Joseph, I love, you know, you're making my work too easy. There's nothing for me to say except it's spot on. Because what you've got here is you've got a very simple composition, but very powerful because that, you know, that line jutting out into the fog and the you know there is a subtle difference between the, the water and the sky you can see there's a line of demarcation there uh it's awesome well done i wouldn't change right. a, th a thing about it except to get it printed and framed all right here is our next one this is oh go ahead no i'm just oh sorry sound like you're gonna say something uh, I was just going to say, Bachi Mi is here. Ah, yes. Uh, this is from uh, Gear. Uh, so, who we saw two photos from last week. Yeah, uh, so sort of in that series. Abstract 
yeah, this is an abstract motive uh, from some rocks that make an interesting shape. Taken with a Zis Zeiss. Yep, Zeiss Acrona and Fomapen 100. And this is also paper negative, right? As the, I would assume, like your one last week, which gives you bonus points. You know, it's a beautiful um, piece of, of geometry here because we've got we've got the lines of the uh, the rock and we've got the crack going up there, and it's a you know it's a very cool image, especially because we know you photographed it. I I believe. No, it was not film. Okay. Ah, it is be normal film. Okay. Uh, normal film. Okay, got it. Not, <laughs> all right. Didn't know what be normal was, but now we know it's film. That's that's a plus. And what size negative is this gear? I'm curious, like, what, you're shooting on a 4x5. I think last week you were... It was four by five that was upsized to a five by seven. Also very commendable that you're, you know, you're shooting in film and you're getting, um, you're getting a really good strong range from pretty much black over here. There are there's some whites here. You know, that's something we always strive for is the full dynamic range six by nine. Wow. Now, wait a minute. 120 is obviously very different than six by nine. So, um, is it 120 film or is it six by nine? Okay. Uh, so anyway, well done. Awesome. Make sure you get a print of it made. Okay, Jared, who else have we got? All right. Our next one is from our friend Wayne, who is the Bachi Me uh, on YouTube. Bachi Me. So this is uh, summertime hair summertime hair washing outside for Bella it's kind <laughs> of a big deal uh, okay oh I see the he answered this it's the format of six by now okay got it all right uh, yes um, that is a cool photograph very spontaneous you know the ge geometry of uh, you know, through the leg, through the arms, triangular. There's a lot of triangles in this photograph, which, you know, geometry is a cool thing, and it really works. And then we've got the arc of the hose here. But really, what's the deal here? The whole point of this photograph is that expression is just really cool. I have never washed my hair on the grass like that. <laughs> so that's a first to me, I've never seen that happen, but that's really well done, and, and you know, having it be a black and white works really well. So far, you guys have given me no work whatsoever in terms of critiquing other than to say these are great photographs. Well done. Get them printed. That's my critique. Good one. All right. Uh, this one is from Amir, longtime contributor. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, I saw this on uh, Instagram. Yep. Streets of New York. Sometimes you have luck and things align well. Yes. So here we have uh, Neo in the background. Who's they're coming out with? The, if you guys haven't been paying attention, the newest Matrix I think is December twenty second, right, Jared? Have you, have yeah, you been it's that? around that time, like right before Christmas. Now let's hope the first one was awesome. The second and mm -hmm. third did not make it. Uh, let's hope they've gone back to, you know, what made the first one so amazing. I've watched that many, many, many times, and I'm a big fan of that movie. Anyway, back to this photograph. This is cool, and if this is spontaneous, you know, I don't know if you had somebody, you, you know, I'm not going to say paid, but enticed into the frame to walk in front of you, or this just happened. Very cool either way, it doesn't matter. And uh, it's it's just a really cool photograph. There's a lot of things I like about it. I like the mirroring, you know, the angles. Uh, Can you is what's he holding? Has he got a bag in his hand? I doubt it. Um, and then this red line is really cool because that adds a just kind of a touch there. Yeah, that red line going there. 
and these silver, you know, stanchions in Times Square. Um, good one. Even the fact that his feet are off, not touching the ground, that adds that sense of motion and, uh, you know, the forward motion of his body. And it's pretty cool. So if you, if you feel like it, um, you could tell us how you, if you directed this or this just happened. Uh, but anyway, it's a cool photograph either way. I love it. And the Spartan right. 80, yeah, it's very cool. This one is from Christy uh, Drown, uh, and it is a Arizona sunset. So, Christopher, you missed your critique, but I was just giving you a thumbs up. It was awesome. I love the candlelight. I love the composition, the expression. Bravo. Okay, another cool photograph. So, you know, we've got multiple frames going on here. We've got the frame inside the tree limbs. We've got the frame on the outside of the tree limbs. And then, of course, the setting sun. And then, you know, framing it within the two branches going up. You've done a good job of kind of moving back, um, which is cool. And tree, it's a tree framed by a tree. Good work. Another, your, your work, you guys are doing really well. And it's all very different, which is great. So, uh, Christopher also mentioned that he's based in the United States in New York and he was visiting Mexico for a holiday. That's cool. Well done on getting that photograph. Wow. Okay, and nice one, Christy. All right. Uh, here is one from our good friend, Lucian, uh, over across the pond, as we like to say. Yes, uh, I so recognize this. So this one is him enjoying the view. And I made a note, I think, on the last one. Wouldn't it be nice if there were people in the frame, which you have here, I believe, right? Isn't that a person there? Maybe you uh, could... There's a couple people, I think, right there. Yeah, there's there, a couple yeah. people right there. And I love the, you know, now you've included people in the frame, because to me that was the only really m missing element. Um and the trees reflected in the water definitely works and i'm going to ask you a favor would you mind if i use the one from the previous one and this one in another uh i have a another critique blog that i'm doing would you mind if i use those two photographs and oh. if you don't mind i would like to just put them up there as examples but uh, it worked to me, putting the people in there as that punctuation point. I love reflections. I'm a big fan of them because you've got a built-in symmetry. And, um, you know, you've got this little branch kind of on the side, which gives it a little bit of a depth and a little bit of framing going on there. So it, it you know, really works. Good one. Um, uh, we're going to go back to Amir, actually, because I see here that he took a look at the photo of his that we looked at last week. So we looked at this photo last week, yeah. if you remember? And your yeah. recommendations were make a black and white and try to get rid of these plants. Yes. And so he was on the road at the time when he uploaded it. And now that he's gotten back home, he said he took a look and uh, did some editing. Not fully finished yet, but uh -huh. so still doing a little bit more work around uh, yeah. this area. But he did really like the suggestion for the black and white. Yeah, that definitely works. And I can see where you're going. And you, yeah, you want to finish that up. It's got it's got some more work to be done there. But it definitely, I think the black and white definitely helps that image. I'm not sure if you use Silver FX Pro to process it. If you didn't, I suggest you do. Because it'll help bring out some, some of more of the dynamic range. If you saw my... A uh, webinar that I did on uh, for DxO Labs, who makes this, you know, there's some really cool features to help you with the dynamic range. You can download it for free for 30 days and, and you know, try it out. But um, I use it. I've been using it before they even sponsor me. I was using Silver Effects Pro because Huntington Witherell, who's a fantastic 
photographer in my area who trained with Ansel Adams, worked with Ansel Adams, recommended it to me. And I figured, wow, anybody who's processed images with Ansel Adams, I'm going to really listen to how he processes his digital and he uses Silver FX Pro. So good. And thanks for showing us the before and after. Show us the final version, too. Yes, definitely. Uh, okay. That's one thing we love about this show is seeing your work and seeing you continue to improve it. Yeah. Um, another thing that's uh, really cool, so I wanted to show the photo in it, but also uh, show, because we've been talking about this in AYP+, Plus about getting your work out there and showing, and so Andre has a exhibition uh, that is currently wow. going on in London. So if you happen to be in that area, um, and this is the photo that he has for like the invitation well done andre wow that's fantastic johnny cash looks like you took a photograph of somebody did a kind of a mural of him but the person walking by that adds that otherwise it'd just be okay i took a picture of johnny cash mural but the person walking through the frame is what makes it alive and gives it life so that's excellent and very well done and please share more of the story of your exhibit take photographs videos whatever put those in the AYP club because I love to hear about people getting their work out to the world mm -hmm. definitely all um, right this one is from Hugo uh, captured the love between a mother and her daughter this was with a Fuji film uh, XT3 and okay. cut on an XF 35 millimeter lens at f stop uh, 4.1. Yeah, I mean, it's the child's expression is, of course, the center of this photograph. And um, there's really nothing I would change, you know, really change about it. I was just looking at the edges. They're, they're, they're dark, you know, so your eye isn't coming out of the frame. Um, black and white works really well. It kind of gives it a timeless feel. Chris Burkhart mentioned that, that one of the things that makes a great photograph is the timelessness of it. If it, if it will endure, you know, and this could have been photographed any time in the last century almost, you know. So, another good one. The tiniest little, tiniest little thing I would change, I would do is you see these top at the very top edge there's a couple of bright spots i'd probably just burn those to the right just above the girl's head yeah those two two kind of circles one almost in the corner and one i would just burn those out only because it does just t a tiny bit pull my eye out of the frame and that's something you guys want to pay attention to anything that pulls the viewer's eye away from the main subject you want to get rid of and that's where you're your darkroom skills come in because that's what we did in the darkroom. We're trying to keep the viewer inside the frame, not not going out. So those are tiny little fixes that would take a minute to fix. Um, um, we have a question from Christopher about Silver FX Pro. Yeah, Silver FX Pro is a very, it goes way beyond anything you can do in Lightroom. I use Lightroom as my primary storage and uh, processing platform. I also use Photoshop, I kind of go back and forth. But SilverFX Pro is, is way beyond that because it basically emulates various different films. It's got the Ansel Adams Zone system built into it. It's got all sorts of tools and handy things built into it that, that just take it way beyond what you can do in Lightroom. And the good thing is you can click from Lightroom and say edit in Silver FX Pro, it moves you right into that platform, you finish editing and then we'll save it in Lightroom. So they integrate, they're perfectly yeah, you, integrated. You can use it as a plugin as JM uh, just commented. That's correct. Yes, you can uh, use it so as a plugin. super easy. Yeah, absolutely. They've completely integrated it with, and you can use it with any other platform, by the way. You don't have to just use Lightroom you know, or Photoshop, if you're editing and or if you're processing Capture One, for instance, you can transfer over. I don't think they have the automatic right click kind of thing, but it doesn't matter. You can still bring your image from any other editing platform 
into Solar FX Pro. So very handy. Yep. Um, just wanted to remind people because we are giving away a Bay Photo yes. Prince. The only way to do it is to submit your photos. So uh, I am putting in the comments, uh, in the chat, a link to the AYP Club where you can submit your photos. Uh, so be sure to ask to join. I'm keeping an eye on it as we're going. Uh, so it is not too late yet to submit your photo. And speaking That's of right. photos, we've got our next one here. This is from Mache. Uh, mm. This is one of the photos I took during a few days canoe trip in the summertime. That is a really cool image. You know, the, the backlighting of these guys... It's awesome, you know, the, their hair kind of being lit up by the glow of the fire there. And then they, what really makes it work is the expression of the guy on the right and how the other two guys are looking at him. Uh, and, you know, that's a difficult exposure, not dealing with a lot of light there. And the sparks going up into the sky, that's a, that's a winner. I would... The only tiniest little thing, I'd probably crop that um, over to the left. I'd probably just crop that out. Uh, just, this yeah, I'd probably just pull my crop over and just get rid of it because it doesn't really, it's not essential to the story. And it just, again, it's just something where my eye goes, what is that over there? And so it's pulling me out of the frame. I would just get rid of it if I, I'm just holding my hand over it. It doesn't, it's just tiny little crop, just slice that right off there uh and then it just keeps everybody's eye right in that you know that kind of circumference of the where those guys are in the light anyway awesome photograph all right i wanted to grab this one this is from christy she was the one that did the um arizona sunset with the tree in a tree but she also submitted this one because Christy said, I want, I'm want i wanting to explore black and white and would love to have this picture critiqued. Okay. So good that you're getting into black and white. That's, uh, you know, my, my favorite kind of medium because that's where I learned photography was all on black and white and then later got into color a little bit more. Um, you know, it's an interesting photograph. It doesn't really have a center of attention. I mean, the mountain is, and there's there's the light coming up. I guess the sun is coming up through there. Um, you know, it's, it's basically what I would call a backdrop, and it's a scene that's ready to go. But something needs to happen in the frame to make it really pop. A bird flying in or a... An animal or a person or something, even a car. Is this a roadway? I think it is, right? Yeah. Uh, not sure. It might be. E even a car zooming by. Something to add that extra bit of life to it or motion. And, you know, here's the thing. I've given this advice before. Sometimes you find yourself completely in a perfect spot. And you're, you're just set up. And you just have to be patient and wait for something to move into the frame. Uh, as we saw in the Times Square one with, uh, you know, the, the, bill, the yeah. billboard in the background and then, and then the guy walking into the frame. And you might have, again, he might have a direct, directed it, it's fine. Okay. So you're on a road trip, cool. Sometimes you have to just stop and wait and see what develops. And Bob Holmes has mentioned this, you know, that's, that's how these National Geographic guys come home with really interesting photographs because they wait for something to develop in the frame and take as much time as they need for that to happen. It's, it's part of the game. Yeah, it would be cool to see if a car were driving by and I, I, would, I would capture that as, you know, a blurred car, you know, just a long exposure. Mm -hmm. Good, Christy. Okay. Keep right. shooting in black and white. Uh, you may remember we had uh, uh, Anya Dip. Uh, last week we looked at his photo of artist, uh, you know, crafting in India for a festival. Mm -hmm. And here is a similar photo. This is called the Indignant Artistry. Uh, so the artisans of this wonderful craft are insufficiently paid 
Surprisingly, this craft is sent to all parts of the world from this very place in India. However, to these people, the art means more than the money. A very, very cool photograph. You know, the guy sleeping is, is what makes it interesting. If we just saw the statue, okay, whatever. You know, this is an example of, of putting life into your frame. And, um, you know, in this case, it's probably really hot there, and he's just taking a break. So assuming that he actually is part of the creation of this, I mean, it's really hard to say, uh, but, you know, it's kind of an interesting juxtaposition between his limbs and the limbs on the, on the <laughs> excuse me, the limbs in the, statue here you know we've got we've got kind of like the differences but the similarities too and that's that's a very cool technique one one tiny thing just burn the edge at the bottom again you want to keep your viewer yeah because it's very bright there just burn that because there's no all it's going to do is pull the viewer down to the bottom and just you, you want to keep their 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 focus on the top and that's why edge burning has been a technique in photography for probably a century or more uh, because it just and I'm sure the same technique is true in painting just you know stand back and look at where does your eye go and just if there's anything that pulls your eye out then just fix it with your processing um, Christopher mentioned about yeah the punctuation point it really helps because it just gives that extra element of where you you emphasize and that's what a punctuation point does is it it helps the reader understand what they're seeing if it's an exclamation point you know there's a strong emphasis on it and this has got a punctuation point which is the guy the guy sleeping is the punctuation point it's it's built right into this photograph but anyway that's my only comment burn, burn the bottom right and that tiny little tiny easy thing to fix or to add to your photograph all right what else we all got right. going on uh this is from our friend alicia jones uh in canada and uh, no caption or wait this is uh, okay, so she had two photos. One was from the bottom, and one was from the top of a waterfall. So this is the one from the bottom, looking up. Yeah, I'm curious how it looks like a screen capture. Yeah, uh, I think it might be a screen capture. That they, okay, from an iPhone. I would just crop Here's the it one out. from the top. Let me pull that up, too. So this okay. is the one from the top of the waterfall. The bottom is clearly the more interesting one. Uh, going back to it, I, I would just crop the black bars because they're not really part of the photograph. And it just, it doesn't, you yeah, know, zoom in know. like that so that we can just focus on the photo. Yeah, so now, you know, the, what, what makes this work is the driftwood at the bottom. Without that, it's kind of like, okay, so we're watching a waterfall. But the driftwood gives it an edge to the frame. There's a frame there being formed by that driftwood. And it kind of, it helps, and it's on a diagonal flow, and it kind of adds some interest to this. Um, you could probably punch up those clouds a little bit in your processing. Yeah, just a little bit more. I think you could bring those clouds out. But the what, to me, what makes this photograph really work and makes it more interesting than the one at the top is the driftwood, especially because you have a contrast between, you know, pretty much just white, and then subtle green water but now we have this tan of the wood that kind of helps balance things out or or not balance but actually create a difference and that's you know a difference of of how something is in your frame is going to add power to it those those things where they're similar but different like we saw in the previous one and that actually that really helps you with this one that works really well. So just crop it off at the top and the bottom, and then you got it. Okay, who All else right. have we got? We got a time for a few. Um, Gear, of course, submitted another one. That's another one of his paper uh, 
his paper. Oh, I negative. had you confused. I'm sorry. Okay. Hmm? Here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, interesting. So if you uh, if you have time for another critique, it's a paper negative, large format, uh, five by seven inches. Yellow filter was used to tame the contrast. Accidental light leaks made yeah. it even more interesting. So it's a Linhoff color with 150 millimeter uh, computer uh, uh, lens. Gives about the same view as a 30 millimeter full frame. Okay. So, you know, I'm, I'm interested in it because you have, you know, done it with uh, paper negative. And, you know, obviously you're, you're going to great pains to capture this the light leaks yeah i can see them around there's even a streak looks like a little streak to the left of the tree um but going beyond that it needs it needs something else and it's it's this is an example of what i mentioned a moment ago just just be patient especially since you're set up on a tripod something could move into that frame a bird a dog a deer a person and that would add a lot of life to it and add a lot of interest because it would be a punctuation point and a, let's just call it a life point. There's something interesting to our eye when we see live forms. A tree is a live form, but it's an unmoving live form or mostly unmoving. It doesn't get up and walk around at any rate. You could have a tree move in the wind, but um, listen, Garrett, just you're, you're set up. Wait. See what happens. See if you can entice some life form into the frame. A goose or a duck or a dog or a squirrel or a bear or something sooner or later will come by and wander into your frame or maybe you can help them get in there. Or you could put yourself in the frame. As I've mentioned, you just simply put it on a self-timer and then you walk into the frame. That's what our friend... Uh, um, uh, yes, okay, I'm forgetting his name, but other photographers have, have, have done this, and it's something you should utilize. You can be your own model in the frame, and it actually works. So, but bravo on, on capturing with paper negatives and big format. It's really well done, and that's a lot of work. Okay, uh, Jared, we might have time for one more, if there's any more. Or if we, if uh, we've we've got one it. more image here. Um, it is the second one, but this one's also from uh, Christopher uh, Carpenter, who oh, did our cool. first one. Uh, uh -huh. So this is boys playing cricket near the Taj Mahal, as you can see. You've got, some, you know, for a guy just traveling, you've got some, some really good insight into how to capture these people that is non-distracting. I mean, that's the thing I noticed about the very first one is it's like we're viewing them without any kind of distraction from the camera and from you. And, you know, you, you might have been shooting with a longer lens, but um, nonetheless, you know, very cool how the guy is running into the frame and... Um, you know, the other guy with the bat is running. Boy, I guess I don't understand how cricket. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's like baseball. So he's he's running. One guy's running in home, basically. And the other guy just hit hit the ball. And he's running. So it's really cool how you get that motion going both ways. So bravo. And since we missed Christopher, this is our last one. Would you go back to his very first one? Yes, uh, let me. And I just want it. to pull that up. Make talk sure. About it again. You guys have all done incredibly well. I do have a winner for you. Um, it's hard, a hard choice because I've seen a lot of really great photographs this morning. Uh, but there is one that stood out for me, and, and to... yeah, we'll bring it, it. Bring it up. There's so many photos to go through. There we go. I'm going to give there you, you the award of the print for this, Christopher. Again, what I love about it is the fact that we're not invading this, what's going on here. We're not doing anything to disrupt it. The light is 
fantastic coming off the candles. The expression of the grandmother with the baby and the other mother, the mother looking away. Anyway, you're getting a print from Bay Photo Lab. Well done. And the rest of you guys are fantastic too. I've seen some really great work. And uh, Christopher, enjoy that. If you would, I'd love to see when you get the print made, take a picture of it and put it up in the AYP club because I'd like to see how it looks on the wall. Okay. So and, thank uh, you. I've sent you a message on Facebook, uh, Christopher. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, just sent it. So. Yeah. Well done. Let's all give him a big hand in uh, in the chat. Just bravo. Good one. Okay. Yes. Fantastic, Christopher. So uh, listen, a couple of things. So first of all, we do have the sale. We want you guys to take advantage of it. Really, I'm, I'm not kidding, like 97 bucks, you're going to get tutored by Mark Silver and Bob Holmes. Come on, you can watch those videos over and over again. You can give them to somebody who needs to learn photography. If you have somebody who you're, you're trying to mentor, have them watch my show, my, my course, because it's going to take them from the very, all the way through the five stages of photography, take them through every single stage, introduce them to photography, and for somebody who's been around a long time, it will round out their photography. It really will. And of course, get it along with the composition course. I give you 83 compositional tools. And I talk about many of the things I talked about here today. And then of course, the course with Bob Holmes was it's just fantastic. How many people get to follow around a National Geographic photographer for two days? And that's what you get with this course. So, boom. Grab it while they're on sale, you guys. Get some, get one for yourself and get one as a gift. Um, what else have we got here? I want to remind you guys to subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our new shows. And we will not be having a show next week. That's just right. Just as a heads up to people because of the holidays that's right because it's you know christmas christmas eve but we will come back on the 30th just before the end of the year so we'll do one last critique show right then and there okay so i can't think of anything else and i appreciate you guys participating i hope this helps i am doing some critiques elsewhere um and but I prefer these because I'd rather talk through a critique than do a written one. It just, to me, it's more like what this is all about. You're very welcome. Thank you guys for showing up. And Jared, do we have anything else? Don't forget to get something from Bay Photo Lab. Support yeah. them, okay? And uh, if there isn't anything else, I'm going to say, remember to like, share, leave your comments. I try to answer every comment. If it needs an answer, sometimes they don't. I'll just go maybe thumbs up or whatever, and there's there's no real answer needed. Um, but I appreciate your comments, and I appreciate you guys interacting, so that's really cool. We're going to have some some new, ch new shows coming up in 2022. We've got some cool things we're working on. And I'll just say, if you haven't already done this, I'll say it again. Subscribe, enable the bell. And, oh, I know I was going to ask you guys. Please head over to my Instagram if you would. Um, there's that guy. Look at that guy with the beard. Man, that's some... <laughs> that's a lot of hair going on. And what's funny about it is, you know, things haven't changed that much, have they? I mean, we're in the age of big beards. And uh, there was a time where we had skinny little, you know, little beards. And now their big beards are back. And... There I am with my Leica M3. So if you guys after this wouldn't mind heading over and um, following me, I'd appreciate it. And other than that, I want to remind you guys and say this with me. Say it with me. I want you to remember to get out and capture your own images of life. Take care, you guys. We'll see you. Have a Merry Christmas, other holidays you're celebrating. And we'll see you before the end of the year on the 30th. Take care.